So I decided to do a uh, semi-impromptu video on managing a trade that has gone um, gone badly. Uh, so I put it together a spreadsheet uh, with all the transactions I had done on a particular underlying TLT in this case and was working through the video and problems came in from the beginning. There were audio issues. Uh, every time I brought up Thinkorswim or changed something in Thinkorswim, the audio went uh, very strange. And then somehow I managed to screw up the ordering of the spreadsheet. By, I must have clicked a sort button accidentally and it uh, jumbled everything. So rather than trying to go back and piece that together, I downloaded all the transactions uh, from the broker, and we'll use that as a basis for the spreadsheet. And we will go through um, we will go through all the transactions and try to generate what I was thinking. And instead of trying to do everything in real time with uh, ThinkBack, I would just use ThinkBack and, and Thinkorswim to calculate the deltas of the position to try to, uh, to give a numerical justification for why I did what I did. So let's switch over to the uh, spreadsheet and get started. So this is uh, what I'm going to use to kind of show the position deltas. This is Think Back by Thinkorswim. So you can set up a trade date and recreate a, a trade from any particular day in history for which they have data. So I sold the 135-143 strangle, which is what I actually uh, uh, sold, and that was on January 21st of this year. And then it shows you the position down here. And what's cool about this is you could use the um, calendar widget here to advance it out in, out in time. So I can click this. I click whatever date I want and it will adjust the positions accordingly. So I can look at what the deltas, how the deltas would evolve in time considering, you know, if I kept this position on. Uh, I'm not going to show that in real time because for whatever reason when I uh, use this it causes issues with the audio. So I'm just going to do everything in the spreadsheet. Uh, this is the spreadsheet I downloaded from from the brokerage. Um, unfortunately, uh, it breaks every spread into its individual legs. So this is my initial strangle here. And then you can see down here um, is another. This is a rule. Uh, it, it logs both the buy and sell legs. So it's 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 broken into two pieces. A uh, little bit annoying, but we will make uh, a do with that. So what I'm going to do is split the spreadsheet up a bit uh, to kind of reflect each individual trade and each individual rule adjustment or whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, we could just see how, how I handle a uh, losing trade. Okay, after a bit of work here, I have broken this up into individual trades. As you can see here, what I've done is added some notes, um, kind of giving my thought process here. I've kept track of like the total credit. Obviously, this is my initial credit for the strangle is only 84 cents. And then after a roll, I picked up a little over two bucks. Uh, what else here? I have also logged the TLT price at that, that particular time I did the trade and the position delta. So the position delta, my initial strangle is here. It is slightly short. So I show, uh, so let's see here. The stock was trading about 139, let's call it 139.50, and I sold basically a delta neutral strangle. Uh, a little on the tight side, maybe a little bit, bit within one standard deviation. Collected 84 cents. Uh, I have generally been bearish on bonds. I want them, I, you know, I'm, I want to be short bonds. So this strangle was initially or intentionally designed to have a bit of short delta. That's that 30, uh, that six delta there. So we see that within like four calendar days here, um, the stock price has rallied and it's already breached my uh, my call strike. So I have to make an adjustment. It's about that time to roll out uh, to the next cycle anyway. So this was initially done in the February cycle. And uh, yes, it's a February cycle. And um, so I want to roll out to the March. I typically roll out in time when there's like 20-ish, 21 days left just to avoid the uh, gamma risk associated with uh, positions that have a short time to expiration. And I'm also adjusting up my put strike. So I'm rolling up my put because my put is only at three delta. So I'm rolling it out in time, rolling it up a few strikes, and then just rolling out the 140. Is it the 143 call? Yes, the 143 call. And I pick up a couple dollars here. So my uh, credit is now 2 18 and my position delta is starting to get a little bit short it was initially 50 what is that 59 ish minus 59 and i cut that down to about minus 38.6 call it minus 39 so i move on to january uh, 31st and the stock continues to rally we're now up to 145 on the stock price almost 146 
Uh, my position delta has grown to 50 and I want to cut that down again so it's another roll up of a put. So obviously I got a credit to do that. My total credit is now 272 and I've cut my deltas down by about uh, 10, a little more than 10. So moving on to the towards the end of February, February 20th, I make another adjustment um, and roll and I roll out the call. Uh, I don't know quite why I did this. Usually I roll the strangle as a strangle, uh, but I just took the call because the call at this point was so far in the money that uh, it was essentially a short stock and I just wanted to, to roll it out to the next, uh, next cycle. So that's what I did here. And for this month, I basically just sat on it and I was assuming it would come back in price. And as you can see from the chart, this is about where I put it on and this is where I made that adjustment. Obviously, it's just done nothing but go up. And you can see that it even gets up to almost $180 at this point here. But that's, that's in March. So the next step a couple days later is to roll out the put. Um, same idea here. I pick up a little bit more of a credit. I cut my deltas down from 73 to 60, what is that, 66, 67, um, <clears throat> just to chop some of that delta risk off. And that's the story of a lot of these rolls. It's just delta adjustments. So I'm going to kind of gloss over uh, a bunch of them because they're the same, same idea. So the next one, uh, the 27th. So three days later, I roll my put up to the 146 line. So uh, my call, call is considerably in the money and is a very high delta, as you can see from here, because my put is not helping me much. This is getting to the point where this call is essentially acting as short stock. So even though I have this weird inverted strangle on where I'm short a deep in the money uh, call and a put that's a couple strikes higher up than that, uh, it behaves a lot as if I were short stock and short a put. And again, I pick up a credit and I reduce my deltas by quite a bit in this case. Uh, I was, this was a pretty aggressive roll, so I cut my deltas down by more than 20. Uh, 20. And I'm going to put the spreadsheet up on GitHub, I think, because there's no point just in reading out every every single transaction when they're just uh, roll-ups of put. So I continue to roll up the put um, in early March, and then the next day I roll it up some more. So now we're up to a total credit credit collected of almost seven bucks six dollars eighty two cents so my deltas are still getting up there they're minus 70 even after the after the rolls so i don't do a hell of a lot until the end of march again i roll the call out to may um, so this is about where we are in this um on the chart so we're kind of at the, the peak of the craziest except for this really wild spike here we're kind of near the near the top and the reason I left the put there is probably because volatility was so high, there was still a significant amount uh, left in that put, um, despite it being kind of uh, kind of uh, far from the money. But I rolled it out a few days later, and I rolled it up, up, um, ro rolled it up and out. Again, I do nothing for the next uh, next month essentially, and then I roll the entire position out until May. And uh, I'm sorry, not the. Um, I roll the call out to June and I roll up the, the put. So again, this is a delta adjustment. And this is one of the advantages of staying small. Despite uh, all this whipsaw and the fact that I'm rather unhappy that I'm losing money, it, it seems like on every adjustment I make, uh, the fact that it's just a one lot I, means I can, I can withstand the, the, pain of, the pain of the losses. So now my collection is up to over $10, $10.70, and my deltas are still about minus 60. So, uh, again, put adjustment, total collections up to 1178. That's just to keep my deltas in check, minus 60. So the next adjustment is actually a debit. Um, I've managed to avoid being assigned on dividends because of this, uh, because of the calls in the money, but this is so far in the money that I'm going to be assigned. So I need to adjust it upwards several strikes to, um, to avoid that assignment. And I have a video on how to determine that, um, which I will link to uh, in a card or in the description below. But th this transaction, of course, is a debit since I'm rolling up a call. Um, I pay I pay several bucks for that, right? It's, I have 1170 something credit and then only 670, 670, uh, what does that say? 678. So obviously debit, but it does cut down my deltas quite a bit because I'm moving the call closer to the money. It's a short call, remember, so I'm, I only have minus uh, 30 something, 34 deltas. So put adjustment again, roll it out, roll it up. Total collection um, is back to 10 something. 
And what I did here is I believe I just completely went inverted or I took the, the put right up to the money. So the stock is at uh, 167 and my put is at 170. So I'm completely inverted. This um, this is back to kind of a normal strangle, except both options are in the money instead of out of the money. In a way, it's a way of saying, screw it. Uh, I want a bit of short delta, but I'm kind of throwing in the towel and neutralizing a lot of my directional risk. The uh, issue with inverted strangles or in the money options in general is they don't tend to be as liquid. So I do not like to roll uh, completely inverted strangles uh, out in time that often. I will take them for a few months. Since, but since this is obviously going to take like a year uh, to, to get back to even on, uh, I want to go uninverting. I want to uninvert it. So um, that's obviously for a net debit. So now uh, my total credit is not positive. It's minus $11. Now you, you have to remember that uh, although this looks bad, I, bad, I'm short the strangle, and this strangle is inverted. So like with the out of the money strangle, it can go to zero. But the lowest that this one can go to here, uh, since it's twenty-two dollars wide, is twenty-two dollars. So if we were to just expire with my short, with the stock price in between my short strikes, uh, I would be down twenty-two dollars minus whatever credit I've I've collected along the way. So this kind of reflects that here. So this is actually not as bad as it looks, although it's it's not uh, not at all pretty. But then again, I reestablish with a little bit tighter strikes to uh, pick up more credit. Um, and my new delta is now minus, f call it minus 15. Uh, so that was just basically an uninversion and uh, reestablishing a tighter strangle with a little bit better deltas. And then a few days later, I roll the position out to July and adjust the put strike because we're back into this rally phase here, um, sometime in here. And as you can see, as the as the TLT's price begins to, to trend downwards, I begin to have the opposite problem. Um, getting whipsawed here quite a bit, so I have to roll down the call. That's my delta adjustment because I don't want to be long because my delta is almost, is almost perfectly flat. So I want to maintain some short delta because I'm still bearish. And so I'm bringing down my call, bringing down my call, picking up a little bit of credit. So it's becoming, you know, a little less negative as, as time goes on. Um, yeah, and then we're just almost to the end here with a rollout of the, um, another roll down of the call and rolling out the put to August. And I need to roll the, the call to August. Uh, I'll probably do that tomorrow or the next day. And uh, yeah, so this total credit collected right now is about this. It's about uh, minus, call it minus seven bucks. So again, it's going to take me several months to get back to, to even, and that's assuming I don't get whipsawed again and things calm, calm down in the next uh, couple of months. So yeah, this isn't quite the uh, quality I wanted. I wanted to uh, use ThinkBack to generate um, you know, analyses and show the risk graphs as, as, as uh, we adjust these positions and the deltas fluctuate, but um, can't get all the technology pieces to play right. So um, this will have to do for the time being until I can figure it out. Um, yeah, that's it. I will put this spreadsheet online somewhere, and um, yeah. Cool. Uh, this was intended to be kind of an impromptu video, and it turned into more of a project than I intended, but uh, whatever. So if you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to ask, and until next time, see ya.